kickoff duties and the guy he'll be kicking to Curran Williams one of the best in the Western Athletic Conference also back there is Chris Harris that goes to Williams at the 10 yard line oh he's met hard by Kamalani Alo say hello to Kamalani Alo that's a lot of aloha for Curran Williams here in Aloha Stadium Kamalani Aloha, Kahuku Red Raider last night doing a job on the Farrington Governors, and he's bringing some of that pain tonight for the Warriors. Yeah, Kerwin Williams averaging 24.2 yards per kickoff return, ranks 48th in the country. Aggies will start on offense. They got a freshman at quarterback in Chucky Keaton. And no surprise, it's a gift to Turbin. Turbin goes outside, run out of bounds by Hawaii linebacker Aaron Brown. That set the stage for the offense for the Aggies. Mention the quarterback, Chucky e. Keaton. He's a freshman, 6'2", 185 pounds from Houston, Texas. 1,147 yards passing, 10 touchdowns, just one INT. Coming into the game, Aggies tied with LSU. The one pick is best in all of college football. They go power right side to the Aggies. Play action. Keaton, he can roll. He's chased by Zach Max. Gets away from a would-be tackle and completes a pass to his tight end and brought down by Aaron Brown. Let's take a look at the rest of the offense for Utah State. Up front, Tyler Larson and Philip Napelu are the big guys that protect the quarterback in open running lane through Robert Turbin. Receiving core looks like this. Matt Austin is the guy to pay attention to. He's their leading receiver. 17 receptions coming in. That was a first down completion for Keaton. His second pass is a picked off. Picked off by Hawaii linebacker Aaron Brown. That's his third INT, second INT of the season. Aaron Brown just dropping in coverage. What a play by Brown. Um, Chucky Keaton is a guy that is very inexperienced. We talked about him. They managed the game well, but here just his second interception. Aaron Brown doing a great job dropping to his landmark and just Johnny on the spot. Interception, beautiful play by Brown. That's almost a ridiculous number. Seven games into the season, and your quarterback has only thrown one pick coming in. There's Brown's number, 62 tackles, leads the Warriors coming into this game, and that is second interception. The Hawaii offense, they take over. An excellent field position at the 42-yard line. Muniz looking deep. Looking for Rice Pollard. Pollard's got some company. It's incomplete. Near the five-yard line. Brian Moniz, Hawaii quarterback. His numbers, we talked about it a lot during the pregame show. 2,483 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, five interceptions. All five of those occurred away from home. He hasn't thrown yet an INT here at Aloha Stadium. Also 224 yards rushing. And six touchdowns for the senior from Lelehua. Second, Ente, for the 42 yard line. Yusefa at running back. Well, he's looking to throw. It's a quick hit on a slam to the left side to Trevor Davis, the freshman making just his second start. The rest of Hawaii's offense looked up front. Notice left guard, Andrew Fa'aumu in to replace Brett Leonard still suffering dizziness from a concussion uh, he got hit a couple of games ago receiving core led by Royce Pollard man we talked about on that first down play the intended receiver Trevor Davis his second start the freshman and Joey Iusefa the big dude at running back so it's third down and four from the 36. Dustin Clapp, Billy Ray Stutzman slot back when he's looking to throw, goes up top. There's nobody home. The intended receiver was nowhere near the area. Walter McClinton almost picked it up. Let's hit the stage defensively for the Aggies. They run a 3-4. Look at those names up front. Sili Moyatu, Lapu Aho. How's that? All amazing names in Logan, Utah. Their linebacking core led by Bobby Wagner, number four in all of college football. Averaging 12.7 tackles per game. That secondary, Robertson, McClinton, Brady, Lawson, not a single INT among that crew. Wagner 
the only defensive player for Utah State with an interception as a team that ranks last in college football. Moniz, left side, tries to go back shoulder to Trevor Davis, and it looked like Trevor Davis was getting bounced around by Jermaine Robertson. Trevor Davis, the freshman, pressed into duty due to all the injuries on at the receiver core and uh, that back shoulder fade, you know, just not happening there. Yeah, when he's looking left side, Trevor Davis, just a freshman, lots of contact. And Hawaii not getting a whistle. Some of the fans here at Aloha Stadium bearing the elements that they saw pregame, some rain coming down. That was on fourth down, so to turn over on downs to Utah State. Flags are flying, and nobody home for Michael Smith. Or Kerwin Williams take that 25, not 20. Flag went flying as soon as the ball was snapped. All side, defense number nine, five yard penalty, replay, first down. Zach Mash, penalty against him for being offside prior to the snap. Zach Mash a little bit anxious there. Here's the way he defended Mash up front. Two guys will be key in this game. Mayor Tonga, Tui Polo to the interior. Linebacking core a bit beat up, but they continue to make plays. Brown, Paredes, and Loro, the secondary. Torres and Hardy Tulio, each with three INTs. Play action, Chucky Keaton, intended receiver. Michael Smith, hello, Aaron Brown. Aaron Brown making his presence felt often and early and Chucky Keaton is wondering I mean how, how do I get away from number one number one is seemingly everywhere in Chucky Keaton sights uh, and with the earlier interception and now the tackle as soon as the ball is caught he's right there for the tackle Aaron Brown you think Aaron Brown's jacked up he looks like it baby. he's got three tackles one punishment though and the INT on that first possession second and nine for the Yankees Give to Turbin, looking for the right side. Gets a block to the edge and turns the corner across the 50 near the 40 and finally knocked out of bounds by the Warriors. Got a key block, picked up 25 yards. And the reason that play works, Robert Turbin is such a patient runner. And look at the arms on him. We talked about him. This guy is a sculpture, but he's such a patient runner. He takes his time, finds daylight. Very tough to bring down. Once his shoulders get squared up with the line of scrimmage, you see him kind of finding his way. They're Chucky Keaton looking down the left side seam. Gets a wide open receiver. And catching that football is Stanley Morrison for 33 yards. They go play action and got a receiver wide open. The reason that play works is Robert Turbin. Hawaii's defense is so worried about the run game that Stanley Morrison at only 150 pounds. 13 catches for 98 yards and a touchdown this season. And most of the receivers in this offense, truthfully, are glorified offensive linemen, aren't they? Utah State, flags are flying yet again. Now they run so effective and they run so often, they lull a defense to sleep. False start, offense number 79, five yard penalty, first down. That time they lulled themselves to sleep. Yeah, Robert Hill, right side guard for the Aggies. I mean, they run so effective where you get a defense so conscious about defending the run, they sneak the passing game there and play action especially. And they get a receiver wide open. But first down at the 10, first and goal. It's a give to Smith. Look right side, nothing there. Cut back left side and gets positive yardage across the five near the three yard line. Michael Smith, 5'9, 205. Not the starter, but they like to bring him in kind of like a closer to finish up drives, and he does a great job for them. Yeah, they go no huddle and get that second down play off. Before two Warrior defenders who were substituted for even got off the field. It's so common now in the game of college football. Many teams go no huddle, don't they? Oh, yeah, it is definitely one of the things that it puts a pressure, a lot of pressure on the defense. You know, they can't do what they just did here, try to substitute you. That they got Illegal caught. substitution. 
on the defense at the distance of the goal. Replay second down. So the defense gets caught trying to substitute different personnel packages that no huddle does not allow for that to happen. Yeah, they were running two players off the field and they did not get off the field before the Aggies snapped the football. Ball spotted just outside the two. Another quick snap again. And this time Turbin gets the call. And Turbin is stopped for a loss of yards at the five yard line by Art Laurel. There was no place for rumbling Robert to go because 57, Art Laurel, Lele Hua graduate. Usually we mention his name when it's the quarterback that goes down. His ability to play both, to be the pass rush guy and the run stopper, makes him very effective. Yet another flag. Art Laurel, seven sacks leading the Warriors, also has eight and a half tackles for loss to lead the Warriors. He has been an unsung hero. Let's go down to the field. Lori, Santi. Little controversy down here. McMacken on the field and Miano trying to get a substitute. On both teams. There are no fouls on the play. You heard that double fouls on the play. They're trying to get the substitute in and Hawaii was flagged on that play. McMacken livid on the sidelines as he has a conversation with the line judge. And both teams struggling to get their substitutions on the field, Robert. Yeah, we had saw those two defenders running off the field for Hawaii. And, and Utah State makes no bones about it. They go no huddle. They go at a high tempo and like to catch their opponents off guard. And what's so difficult to defend a team like Utah State is that most no huddle teams, they're pass happy teams. These guys, they're a physical team. I mean, you look at their tight end, Tyron Lloyd, 6'7", 258. No huddle plus bruising punishment. Yeah, second down and go to the two-yard line. Tight end in motion, straight kick to Turbin. Turbin right side, being chased by Richard Torres, gets into the end zone, but there's another flag on the carpet. Holden, offense number 91. 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. 91's the reserve tight end. They often go with double tights to make it a large formation of front. DJ Tielavea, 6'4", 283 pound, a sophomore. Yeah, he's the little guy. He's the little tight end. Here you see him just holding on and grabbing on to Mike Edwards and can't do that. That's going to get called every single time. If you're that big and you're a tight end in motion, you shouldn't be caught holding a corner. They move back to the 10 yard line. Chucky in trouble. Getting back to the line of scrimmage, brought down by Pai Pai Falimalu. I mean, seriously, if you're a coach and you go watch the film and you're a big, huge tight end on that previous play, you can't get caught holding a corner. That's not good. I mean, if the guy is faster than you and he gets away from you, that's one thing. But if you're up and up with the guy and he's physically beating you, that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's third and goal from the nine yard line. And we see Keaton now, the freshman signal caller in shotgun. Boy, showing blitz, and they're coming. Keaton goes right side, fade. Is it a touchdown? Is it caught? It's a touchdown for the Aggies by Matt Austin for nine yards. It was, it was defended well, though. It was. Matt Austin, 6'2", 198. But you got to love Chucky Keaton. I mean, he's under a lot of pressure here. And he, I mean, Chucky Keaton, for a freshman, yeah. he puts it in the right spot. Yeah, they brought the blitz. And Austin was covered by Hawaii's Tank Hopkins. So the extra point now by Josh Thompson for the Aggies. It is through and it is good and Utah State leads the Warriors 7-0. Take another look at it. It's the fade to the corner. Keaton to Austin and they lead 7-0. This is University of Hawaii football on OC Sports. The Warriors, let's take a look at the matchup all time. The series record is sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. Hawaii leads the matchup 6-5 all time. Their last meeting last season in Logan, Utah. Warriors defeating the Aggies 45 to 7. It was Alex Green with four touchdowns and over 170 yards rushing. Quite the series for the Aggies tonight to march down the field against the Warriors. And the first meeting, Utah State 
at Hawaii in 1927. Really? 1927? Oh, yes. I wasn't there. Were you there? Uh, no, I was not. I was not there. Mike Edwards, fifth in the conference as a kickoff return guy at 24 yards per try. He's been close a couple of times to busting one. And it's not Edwards, it's Ned Scott Hardy who crosses the 30 up to the 35 near the 37 yard line. The freshman from Australia. So Brian Moniz and company will get another attempt at offense to move and make an answer because the Aggies got into the end zone with just over nine minutes left in the opening quarter. A wasted opportunity after the Aaron Brown interception coming away with four downs and coming away with zero points. Maya Ostrowski in at slapback. Royce Pollard, Trevor Davis to the outside. Yosefa on a draw goes left side. Breaks the tackle, almost breaks the tackle. Connor Williams. Right side defensive end making the stop for Utah State, dragging a defender. And Connor Williams, I mean, six foot three, 248 pounds. He's a big dude. And Joey Yosefa churning them legs and dragging a D lineman for an additional three or four yards. Your coach, 343 tough yards this season oh, by you Joey Yosefa. Love that. You gotta love it. As a freshman, Moniz play action looks right side, complete to Maya Ostrowski. Be close to a first down for the Warriors. I think he did pass the first down mark. Maya Ostrowski has started well this season, got hurt. Let's go down now and check in with Rob DeMello. Thanks, Robert. Maya Ostrowski, who missed almost all of fall camp with an ankle injury, missed several weeks this season because of that same ankle slash foot injury. He says he's a better route runner today from watching the plays on the sideline at ground level as opposed to on film. Robert, back up to you. Thank you, Rob. First and 10 on the 48-yard line for the Warriors. Ostrowski coming in 30 receptions, 280 yards. Touchdowns. Moniz breaks free, crosses the 50 to the 40, and gets out of bounds. We talked a lot about what he can do on the ground. 224 yards rushing, 60 D's. That run for 14 coach. You know, you know, Brian Moniz is averaging 94 yards rushing per game at Aloha Stadium if you minus the sack yard. So when he sees an opening, he's got that speed and athletic ability to make things happen. Yeah, Moniz six in the country at 338 yards of total offense per game. And lots of running room once he got pushed out of the pocket and crossed the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 38. At the straight, get to intercept the bounces left side. Tries to get over a tackler. And then Robert Wagner, Bobby Wagner, what he wants to go by, bringing down Iosefa. Joey Iosefa at 240 pounds. Rarely do you see him running to the outside, but we saw him hurdling players before, and that time showing some great athleticism, getting to the edge. Nice game for Iosefa. He wants, he wants it known that he does have some shape. <laughs> he wants it known that he can make a move if need be. That brings up second and four, pick up six by Iosefa. When he's complete, out of bounds. That pass caught by Billy Ray Stutzman. So Moniz now really patient, taking what the defense is giving, good protection, just getting that short passing game, a little bit of run after the catch, making sure they're moving the chains. They're already in great field position near the red zone. The first down pickup by Hawaii on offense. McCade Brady in the secondary, getting that stop for USU. So Polo at center, 27 yard line. Another give. Straight, hard yards by Joey Iosefa, and not much running room. The gang on white shirts waiting for him. And who else but yes. number nine, Bobby Wagner? We talked about him. Uh, I mean, the guy, 12 tackles a game. And you look at his biceps, he's a well put together man. Great instincts. He had 133 tackles last season. He has 89 already. He had 115 tackles as a sophomore. This guy has a bright future ahead of him. But he's close to having back-to-back-to-back to back to back 100 tackle seasons. That would be 
Right. Second and ten. At least decent amount of time for a crossing pattern intended for Ostrowski. But Trevor Davis was in the same vicinity. I don't think everybody was on the same page offensively. Kind of a dangerous throw by Moniz, but I'm going to bet that Trevor Davis, the freshman, was probably running the wrong route. Ostrowski has been in the program a lot longer, but a kind of a dangerous floating pass, and neither guy could come up with it. Yeah, he had crossing was Ostrowski. Moniz not three for seven, 14 yards. Looked like Maya crossed right in front of Trevor Davis. But one of those two. Has gone the wrong direction. The third and ten on the 27. Moniz. That's a beautiful one hand catch by Ostrowski. Another first down for the Warriors. Maya Ostrowski. And you know, I got to say, with Maya Ostrowski, 21 yard game, you know, we always talk about his basketball playing ability, but doesn't that look like he's going in for a layup or a finger does. roll? That's a I mean, finger <laughs> roll by Ostrowski. <laughs> I mean, he just, he's playing basketball on grass, is what he's doing. It took him a while, and you almost have to feel bad for him that the only thing that was holding him back were two NFL guys in front of him at the same position, and Greg Salas and Kaloha Polaris. The first to go from the six, flags, are flying. No doubt it'll be a false start against the Warriors. And getting back to Maya Ostrowski, the only thing. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. The only thing holding Ostrowski back this year has been those nagging injuries. That foot injury, uh, I was talking to him a couple weeks ago. It weird. It wasn't the ankle. It wasn't the foot, he said. It was right on top, right in between. The doctor said all he could do was wait it out, which is very frustrating. It's first and goal from the 11 now. After a five yard, washed off. Moniz got three receivers to his left. Got all kinds of time. It'll be a flag thrown again against the Warriors for holding. And Moniz gets it wide side, throws it out of bounds. I think the guilty party will be David Lefoto. Moniz wisely throws it out of bounds. Holding. Offense number 76. 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. And you are correct, it is Dave Le Lefotu, a Pearl City grad. But Moniz, knowing that the play was, the flag was on holding, I mean, he just, once you see the umpire throw it, you pretty much know he just kind of wisely threw it out of bounds there. And it happened to his right, so he saw every ounce of cloth that was being held. <laughs> gotcha. It's a gotcha moment. Quinn Garner, at defensive end, grabbed by the right paw of Le Fulton freshman out of Pro City. The first and goal for the 21. Moniz, decent amount of time again. Has a lot of room in the middle of the field. And Moniz across the 15. Finally brought down by Bobby Whiteman. Pick up of nine yards for the 20 signal call. Again, Moniz, a lot of patience, but great time and what he can do, he can break down a defense with his feet. As soon as everybody's covered, as soon as there's a gap, he's going to go take it. Nine-yard gain, so tough to defend a quarterback that can run the way he does. And, and watching him run, my eyes were on number nine defensively. Because Wagner blitzed that upfield penetration, then turned around and chased down when he's backside. Redirecting. That's 33 yards on the ground so far for Monique. Second and goal. 13. Monique looking to the end zone. Incomplete. Pass intended for Royce Pollard. And back there defensively is Nevin Lawson. And Pollard looks slow in getting up. And Pollard, the leading receiver on the team by far. Seven touchdown receptions. You can't afford to lose a guy like Pollard. Pollard tried to sell the out, broke on a post. Lawson made a play on that football. Just kind of fell awkwardly. That leg got bent back a little. Now, with all the injuries that this offense has gone through in their receiving form, this would be 
a huge blow to the pass catchers wearing the black uniforms tonight. Exactly. Pollard sets the tone. I mean, we saw him last a uh, couple of weeks ago when even when there were a lot of injuries, he was still coming in, toughing it out, playing despite the pain. I mean, he's a tough guy. So if you see Pollard on the ground, you know something's up because he plays through pain a lot all the time. He's on the field. Yeah, Royce Pollard averaging seven catches per game. That would rank him number two in the WAC, 17 in the country. Also averaging 104.2 receiving yards per game. Also second in conference, 14th in the country. Says he's from San Diego, California, born. Another former walk-on. We talked about Pollard, Torres, Moniz, and Paredes, the captains, the four captains, all former walk-ons. I remember Alan Sampson out for the season, got a knee injury. Darius Bright hurt in the summer, had a hard time physically during fall camp, is yet to make an impression on this offense. Terrence Bell left the program a couple of weeks ago. They've had to take Trevor Davis off the redshirt list and activate him after the injury to Sampson. This is the 11th play of the drive for the Warriors. Third and goal from the 12-yard line. He's looking right side to complete pass to Justin Clapp. And Justin Clapp fighting inside the five to maybe the three yard line. Now, here's what we talked about Kenton Chun pregame. Kenton Chun is not available tonight. He's not dressed. The Magic Man is not your kicker. And this would be right up his alley. Instead, they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Well, the crowd loves it. As you see, Coach uh, I mean, Daryl Khan, Dr. Daryl Khan, also a football coach at Punahou, working on Pollard's knee. The Warriors 0 for 1 already on fourth down. Monique looking to run out to pitches it to Yusefa, and there's no place to go. They go short side. And the Yankees were waiting for Il Sheffa. They are now 0 for 2 in this football game on fourth down. 7 0. Yankees lead the Warriors. This is University of Hawaii football on OC Sports. Thank you, Rob DeMello on that sideline. Doe and Gant will be taking off their red shirt years. They've called the ball for duty tonight. Aggies take over on the three yard line. They get to Durbin. Durbin looking for room, and Aaron Brown, he's not going to make the tackle, but Aaron Brown was engaged with the right guard in Philip Napelu, not allowing Durbin to get free. What a beautiful job, just scraping. I mean, you, you got to love the gap integrity. It forces Turbin to come back inside, and the rest of the gang was waiting for him. So Aaron Brown occupying a guard, Corey Paredes filling the hole. The four yard pickup for Turbin. Second down, Keaton to Turbin again. No place to go for the Aggies. Nothing doing in the middle of the line. The strength of the Hawaii defense. Yes, Pai Pai Falimalu pinching from the outside with the two guys in the middle, coach. Look at the tower of strength. Tui Pulotu manhandling a guard and a tackle, one in each arm. I mean, these guys are studs in the middle. That brings up third down. They're a 48 percent team is Utah State. That's a pass completed, but that's a big time hit delivered by Mike Edwards. Mike Edwards, the transfer from Tennessee. Gotta love that play by Mike Edwards breaking on the ball. Showing so much physicality right here. Textbook tackle by Edwards. Kind of does the little walkover too. Like, I got you, baby. Yeah, Mike Edwards, his specialty is to be a lockdown pass coverage guy. Ten pass breakups this season ranks in 19th in the country. That's a terrible punt. I mean, terrible punt. And a great return and great field position. And Mike Edwards. Wow, and Connor Williams with a big time hit. That's a big time hit on the sideline. 29 seconds left in the opening quarter. Aggies lead the Warriors 7-0. This is University of Hawaii football on OC Sports.
worked out for Hawaii. That's right, 27 yard punt, 20 yard return. And at the end of the play, Connor, <laughs> Connor Williams jacks up Mike Edwards right here. Look at that about, really? Look at as a coach, would you grumble about that? Oh, that was close. That was close. That's a big time hit by Connor Williams. And second time Hawaii's offense will start in Utah State territory. Taking over first and 10. The 19 yard line. Moniz to Sterling Jackson. And Sterling gets to the second level crossing the 15 yard line on first down. And the tandem of Joey Eo Sefa and Sterling Jackson has paid dividends. Jackson, a little bit more of a shake guy, but still a strong runner in his own right. Like these two guys, once they get rolling, they're a tough tandem to bring down. Now, because they're so different, that pose a much bigger problem for a defense. Exactly. I mean, Eo Sefa, great pass blocker. Jackson, all he does is run well. That was the last play of the opening quarter. Aggies lead the Warriors 7-0. This is University of Hawaii football on OC Sports.